Vilsa arrived at the testing pits, her lesser golem following behind her, which she commanded to step into the pits. The humanoid construct was made of metal, just bronze, but still more durable than the softer stone that most other animages managed to animate. Hers was one of a kind. There was a crowd gathering, as expected. She was a five-time competitor in the Panversal Construct Tournament, after all, though none really dared to come up to her, likely intimidated by her being the daughter of a high mage, which was fine, she supposed. The construct was barely taller than her torso, and it lumbered into the grounds easily. Her construct was easy to command, higher durability, and what the spectators were about to see, quite potent. She mentally commanded her to run up to a stationary pile of stones and strike at it. The creature did so after a very short delay, and rammed its false fist into the stones, sending it flying some ways away, and even cracking the ones that took the brunt of the hit. The crowd gasped and cheered, which admittedly always buoyed her, her free tail swishing, subtly in pride. A few more tests, and all she had to do was wait to be called. Vilsa sat, her hair being done by one of her aides. She was told her match would be against humans, the people from a completely new plane, one that had just contacted the core a few years ago. Credit to the newcomers, they were apparently advanced enough that it only took some years of acclimation. Most new planes would take even decades before they could participate in any of the course festivals, especially not one as prestigious as the Pancon. Still, a bit insulting to relegate a veteran contender like her to a match against a new team that was likely to just be an easy win. A demonstration of the Spira Luminary Assembly's power. Pancon organisers like to brown nose, which she understood, carrying favour with her assembly would be useful, but she always sought a proper challenge, so she hated being handed matches that were near sure wins, a fact that she would never tell anyone, especially not father. She sighed. Oh well, the carnage was always fun at least. Vilsa took a breath, despite having done this many, many times before. There was always some nerve. She stood behind a double door gate. A massive ogre in commoner clothes waited for the signal. He nervously glanced at her, and she saw him open his mouth and hesitate a few times. Though never gaining the courage to talk, that was all right. She could hear the commentator speak in an enhanced voice outside. In our north corner, representing Spira and the Spira Luminary Assembly, champion of last cycles of Pancon, Magister Vilsa Nemra. The ogre pulled open the doors and she strode out, her golem behind her. Champion was a title she worked hard to achieve, and she intended to take it again this cycle. She didn't need to fake a smile as she waved to a cheering crowd the stadium filled to the brim with people of different species. As she did, she mentally commanded the golem to do the same, as it stiffly moved about, imitating her waves to the crowd. The commentator continued, In our south corner, representing Earth and the... The commentator paused, And the Combat Robotics League, Team Newton. The opposing door opened, and Vilsa immediately noticed many peculiar things about the other competitor. She's seen humans before, like her own Dave, but without any beast friend features, so she knew what to expect. What she didn't expect was that they would be a team. They waved at the crowd as well, three men, two women. Teams weren't unheard of, but they were uncommon. Most animages prefer to command their golems themselves, it was easier. It stopped the golem from confusing orders, and it wasn't entirely necessary. Though there were successful teams, to be fair. The other peculiar thing was not even using their home plane's name in the title, and their team's name was different from... their league's name? The final thing, and the one that caught her eye the most as an animage, their construct. A... box? It was a little squat thing. 
still as large as one of the humans, but most of it was low to the ground instead of tall. It had sloped size and was obviously armoured. In fact, it was armoured in what looked like metal too. She had no idea how it moved. She saw no legs, yet it did. It followed them out. In front of it was a lopsided rectangle? Upon closer inspection, it seemed to be unfixed in place, causing it to move slightly when the construct turned. Well, this might be an even easier win than she thought. Competitors, ascend to your stations, the commentator announced. She went up the side stairs to a small chamber shielded by stone glass. So did Team Newton. Magister Vilsa, ready? The commentator said. She commanded the golem to go into a stance reminiscent of a brawler and punch the air a few times. Perfect delay, good speed. She nodded. Ready? Team Newton, ready? The construct on the opposite end of the arena moved forward and backwards on its mysterious absence of feet. Then, the lopsided rectangle moved faster than faster in half a second, spinning and whirring, blurring into motion, loudly buzzing, before quickly decelerating. Oh, planes below. What was that? Ready. One of the men in the team yelled back in accented core common. Then... The commentator paused for effect, and the crowd held their breath. Begin! Vilsa commanded her golem to run forward, his lumbering steps quaking the arena. The box-like construct rushed forward too, fast, as its rectangle very quickly whirred. Sidestep, now, she mentally commanded. Her golem took a half second, but as gracefully as it could, foot over foot stepping to the side, her minor summonings making sure it didn't cross his feet and trip itself. The opposing box rushed past her golem, but quickly corrected, turning immensely quickly and giving chase. A fight then, she whispered to herself, as she felt a smirk, and she commanded her golem to brace itself, and run forward, pulling an arm back. Team Newton's box flew forward and... BANG! With a harsh sound and collision, the whirring weapon and Vilsa's golem collided, flinging both constructs from each other, with her golem slamming into the arena walls and a dent in his fist. The box, not even momentarily staggered, quickly whirred his weapon again, going on the offensive. How is it so fast? Her tail split up. There was a heavy hit, but not without harm to itself. Golem, brace! Her golem knelt, putting an arm behind his knee and the other on the ground. As stable a position as she can make it. The whirring weapon collided. The crowd oohed and gasped. Another massive hit, with both of their constructs flying from each other. The box hitting the opposite wall. Her golem flew, but not as badly as earlier. She grinned. Little damage. Wait. There was a full chunk missing from her golem's knee, torn off by the impact. She nearly didn't notice Team Newton already on the golem's heels, as she quickly commanded her golem to throw a punch. The delay didn't reach in time as the whirring weapon flung her golem across the arena and onto the floor. That was it. It was over. Three decisive hits. The mental link told her that its core was damaged beyond command. The opposing construct continued to wear his weapon, moving forward and backward like a predator beast. The crowd was silent. Magister Vilsa, can your golem move? The commentator hesitantly asked. One more try. No. Then, by knockout, they paused. Your winner is Team Newton. The crowd, unsure at first, hesitantly clapped before the cheers rose. Vilsa looked at the remains of her golem at the summoning stations. Many other competitors working on their own constructs. This wasn't unfixable. She could still get her golem up before the next match. But the damage that whirring weapon did was significant. She had never seen anything tear metal before. She put a hand on her chin. Hey. She nearly jumped, but managed to stop herself. She turned to see one of the men from Team Newton. 
similar in age to her, or at least he looked like it. She didn't know human chronology. Great fight out there. Sorry about your golem. I thank you, she said, and it's all right. Your team created a powerful construct. That breaks itself in the process of destroying its opponent, but she wasn't about to say that latter part. Thanks. The design's based on my dad's old bot, just as destructive, let me tell you, he said, pointing to another of Team Newton, an old man who waved at them. I see, Vilsa said, knowingly mediocre at conversations. It didn't seem to bother the man. I'm Mark, by the way. Holding out his hand, she'd observed that human tradition and she knew what to do. It was a firm handshake. I'm Magister Vilsa, she said. I look forward to your future matches. It wasn't just a generic saying this time. This time she meant it. It was perhaps the most fun she'd had since she began competing in Pancon.